Suppose you are thinking about 3D printing and you are scavenging around the internet and looking on sites and on YouTube for more information about 3D printing. You want to know as much as possible about 3D printing, right? You want to know if the printer you want to buy will meet the needs for the purpose of your 3D printer. Is that printer going to be used just once a month or are you intending to use it more than one time a week or maybe on daily base. Maybe you want to try 3D printing out and see where all the 3D printing is about. There are many things that you need to know before starting with 3D printing. Hello, I'm Zachary and welcome to this video. Before going into everything else, the purpose. Why? Why do you want to buy a 3D printer? Is it because of a hobby like making models, printing a bus, maybe small houses for your model train? Maybe you are playing some board games, maybe a video game character that you want to 3D print. Or are you a DIYer that you want to make things for in and around your house or maybe for in your garage or your shed? Well, those things you can 3D print and use it there. Or maybe you want to start a small business with it and you need a 3D printer. Well, in those kind of cases, you can use a 3D printer very well. You print a lot of parts and you will sell them online or maybe businesses coming to you and you offer a service for 3D printing those parts or those models. These are three categories of purposes why you can buy a 3D printer. Well, within the 3D printing, we have two techniques that are used in 3D printing. Well, I'm covering those two, there are many others, but if you are brand new with 3D printing, you can go two directions. One is the FDM, FFF type of 3D printer. How does that work? You have filament on a spool and that filament is being heated by a hot end and it will be printed on a bed. Most printers are running over three axes in three different kind of directions. The X, the Y and the Z axis. Heat is needed to melt the polymer, the filament, in order to print. Some filaments can have a bad odor and need some ventilation. PLA, for example, doesn't need that. The other one is resin or SLA or MSLA. This is a liquid that is being used for printing using a LED or a other light source in order to harden the resin in a certain pattern. It is usually moving in just one axis it's just going higher and not going left right back front like on an fdm 3d printer and it has more details even when you go smaller you will still get some amazing details if you for example on a resin printer stack the build plate full you will still have the same printing time as your biggest model because each layer is done at the same time if you are using resin you also need to wash and cure your model before you can do anything else with it unlike with fdm once it is done you will remove some supports and some other things that are you know supporting the model and then you're done with resin it's not like that you need to wash and cure it in order to get everything also like supports of the model or your parts there's also a different kind of slicing for resin instead of with fdm printing resin in general is toxic and needs some ventilation then we have the printer types since i'm using FDM category 3D printers, I'm more focusing on that type of content for 3D printing. Within the 3D printer types, we have, we have different ones. We have the Cartesian cantilever 3D printer, a i3 style 3D printer. These 3D printers are open from design. They look like a letter T, but then upside down. The print bed moves over the Y axis and therefore needs also a space on the backside of the printer or else it will crush against the wall. The carriage moves over the X and over the Z axis in order to print higher 
over the gantry. Then I have called this one the cubicle because it's a frame where the three axes are moving within. The frame holds the Z axis in its place while the print head moves over the top of the frame. These are the X and the Y and they are moving separately. Then we have the enclosed. This printer can hold the heat within the chamber and you can access the printer by a door to get your prints out of the printer. Within this printer the mechanics are similar like the cubicle 3D printers where the print head moves over the X and over the Y axis and the heated bed moves up and down over the Z axis. The spool of filament can be sitting outside or inside of the printer depending on the type of polymer that is being used for this printer. Then we have Delta 3D printers. Those are amazing and way faster than normal standard 3D printers. They are amazing to watch. All three axes are needed in order to move the print head over the build plate. That build plate is fixed on the bottom of the printer. If one of those axes doesn't work, the print head moves to one side and the other ones are trying to move the head. If the printer is homed back to its standby position, then the print head is all the way up. That is the place where all the end stops are. This type of 3D printer isn't recommended to use as a beginner. For example, when there is some troubleshooting needed, it often runs into more problems that are harder to solve. For example, tensioning one belt, you need to level your print head again. Delta printers are usually tall and need more height than a normal i3 Cartesian style 3D printer. Corex Y 3D printers are faster than a normal i3 style 3D printer. They look like a cubicle 3D printer but with a Core X Y. The X and the Y axis are connected with two belts running over the whole frame in order to move the carriage in the X and Y direction. This type of printer can be used for beginners as well. IDEX. IDEX stands for independent dual extruder. This type of 3D printer has two print heads. Sometimes you have them on each side of the x-axis, one on the left and one on the right side. Some models have them next to each other in one print head. Both print heads can be used for the same type of filament but with different color of filament. But those print heads you can also use for different type of filaments like PLA combined with PVA or water soluble material. This type of 3D printer can be a challenge for beginners because both print heads needs to be well aligned. If they are not aligned then colors are going to be mixed and it doesn't look nice. Now the prices of a 3D printer. You have different kind of prices. I have put them in three different kind of categories. You have the low budget, you have the middle or the normal and you have the higher price ranges or the performance price ranges. In general for all price ranges, the higher the price of a 3D printer, the more features a 3D printer can have. A silent board, auto bed leveling system, a filament run out sensor, a power resume, sometimes there is even a camera and more things to this 3D printer. Most 3D printers nowadays come with a carbon random glass bed or a PEI flexible sheet. Some cheap printers are still using a flexible magnetic sheet or even a sticker that is glued on the bed. In either case always check the specs of a 3D printer before you buy the 3D printer. Let's start with the low budget. These printers are made with cheap or low cost materials. The lower the price the less quality you can expect. I don't say that all printers in this price range are bad but keep an eye on the materials that they use. Check reviews on different sites not on the site that you are checking for that printer. These printers can cost around the hundred dollars and a little bit up and usually are made out of plastic parts cheap electronics and often you don't have a heated bed at all. Then we have the mid-range or normal standard 3D printers. These printers are usually start around the price range of 350 till 500 euros, maybe 600 euros if you want. These printers you can find more metal or more aluminum parts together with some injector molded plastic parts and the electronics are more reliable. These printers you find in the most common slicer with their own profile. 
now to get you started. If you are a beginner that is serious looking for a decent printer, then these are better and give you a great experience without having any trouble. And then we have the high performance category. In this category of price ranges are printers for people that want the best product for their buck. These printers are better engineered and have quality material used everywhere in the printer. Customer care or help desk is most of the time a extra service to guide you along the way of your journey. The prices of these printers are around the $800 or higher. Polymers or filaments. You have different filaments that you can choose from, but always check the filament thickness. You have 1.75 and you have 2.85. This way you avoid buying the wrong type of filament for your 3D printer. And I know, been there, done that. So we have PLA. PLA is an easy polymer to start with. Usually temperatures are between the 190 and 220 degrees Celsius for the nozzle and for the heated bed around the 45 and 65 degrees. Don't put these prints in direct sunlight or in a hot environment because the models or the parts can melt or again get soft. You can use sandpaper, but because of the friction, it can close the sandpaper. PET G, stronger polymer than PLA. Prints with higher temperatures of 230 till 250 degrees Celsius for the nozzle and between the 70 and 85 for the bed. This PET G has the tendency to give more strings, but make sure that you have the temperatures right and also the retraction settings. This polymer can handle heat better and is usually also stronger. And hey, you can send it even better than PLA. ABS is a very common and very much used in very normal products that you can buy. Within 3D printing, this filament can be used for stronger parts and handles heat very well. The printing temperatures of this filament is 245 till 280 degrees. The heated bed is around the 90 till 110 degrees. During printing of this filament, a bed odor can be smelled and therefore ventilation is needed. This filament can warp faster than the other ones that I have mentioned before. You can better use an enclosure for, for example, a i3 style 3D printer or an enclosed 3D printer to print with this polymer. TPU is a flexible filament. It's like a rubber kind of filament. This filament is better to print with on a 3D printer that is a direct drive 3D printer instead of a Bowden tube 3D printer. Slices. I have called this slices because there are also things you need to think about when you are going to use slices. Well, first of all, infill. You can print hollow models and parts, but infill ensures that the part or the model is strong and doesn't collapse during printing. The higher the percentage, the stronger the model or part can be. Infill comes with different patterns. Each pattern has its beauty and function. Temperatures. Always set the temperature right according to the specs from the filament manufacturer. A bit lower, a bit higher. And print something small with it to see which settings is right for that filament. Most slices has already some preset profiles for different filaments or different filament brands. Speed. Quality over quantity or which one do you choose? Slow and steady if you print something like models or busts, I have several busts here, and you want to go slow and steady. But if you're prototyping and you want to check if it will fit, well, you can speed it up, of course. Usually it's the best around the 50 till 80 millimeters per second, depending on which type of printer or which kind of printer you are using. Also supports. If you print cubes, you won't need any supports. But if you are printing models or parts where you have overhang, they need to have supports in order to get a successful print. In the slicer, those overhangs are marked with a specific color. In the default, for most slicers, are the overhangs of 55 degrees. Of course, there are many other things that I can mention, but I think that these are the common things that you need to think about before starting with 3D printing. If you think that I have missed something or maybe you have some questions, please let me know in the comments and I will check 
out what I can do to answer your question as well. Thanks to these Patreon supporters. You can check the link in the description of this video if you also want to become a Patreon supporter or you can check out the YouTube memberships or maybe give a thanks. Feel free to share this video on social media. Like this video, subscribe if you weren't subscribed yet and I will see you next time. Peace, bye bye.